This is how you're going to make baked ziti, known as pasta al forno. In Italy, young people, 25, between 25 and 35, have ranked this pasta as best pasta in Italy. Find out why. And I'm making for you the real pasta al forno. Hi and welcome to Vincenzo's Plate. Guys, we have some really important steps to follow, okay? So please stay with me and let's make the best pasta al forno you ever made. So we always start from the sauce and here we have uh, the base of the sauce which is homemade passata, which is tomato puree. Or you can just buy a bottle from the shop, make sure it's a beautiful Italian passata made with love. I use about half onion, so we cut it in half and we want to chop the onion very nice and thin. So you can use any technique that you like to chop the onion, but what I like to do is I like to make sure they're nice and thin, okay? So you cut the onion and the reason why we do this is because when we eat the pasta al forno, we don't want to have chunks of onion. Okay, time to make the sauce. So in a nice pot, you want to put about four to five tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. And then we want to do the sofrito. We want to cook the onion. So we want to put the onion in there and brown it. And when it becomes brown, we are going to add the sauce. So after about six or seven minutes, we have a beautiful, golden brown onion. Look how nice it looks. So it's time to add the sauce, the beautiful homemade sauce or Italian passata from the shop. Look how beautiful it is. Make sure you stir it properly so you get the onions to go everywhere. For this recipe, I like to use two bottles of passata just because we need the beautiful sauce in this pasta. I like to add a pinch of rock salt my tomatoes because it gives the beautiful beautiful flavor and if you have some leftovers let's say you're not going to use all of it you can always keep it in the fridge for the day after or for the week you can make anything you want with the extra sauce at this point we want to cover the tomato sauce and slow cook it on a low heat for about 30 minutes so the sauce is ready, but now we need to decide what ingredients we are going to use for our pasta forno. Let's learn more about pasta forno and the history of pasta forno. In Sicily, they do use uh, mini meatballs. They do use a type, type of uh, round pasta called anellini. They put lots of pecorino, they put ricotta. In Naples, they put mini meatballs and a pork ragu next to it. Uh, in Calabria, they like to put salami, they like to put meat, they put peas, eggs. In the north, like Emilia Romagna, they put bechamel. Uh, see, like in Naples and in Sicily, they use ricotta. In Emilia Romagna, they put bechamel. Where I'm from in Abruzzo, we don't put bechamel or we don't put ricotta, uh, but we like to use peas, we like to use eggs, we like to use mince. Uh, meat mince or meatballs. What I'm doing today is I'm going to show you a way, a classic way of making uh, pasta al forno using pork and veal. It's a mince, it's nice. And then we're going to cook them slow cooked in extra virgin olive oil until the meat becomes nice and soft. The other ingredients I'm going to add today are the eggs, beautiful hard boiled eggs. I'm going to add Cacciatore salame, calabrese style, nice and spicy. It's a Calabrian inspiration. So now, in another pan, I'm going to add some top quality extra virgin olive oil, about three spoons, and then we add the pork and veal mince. And this needs to be cooked, slow cooked, because you don't want the meat to stress. You want the meat to be relaxed and to be nice and moist. Try to break it so that we get small pieces of meat. We don't want big chunks of meat because this needs to be spread in the pasta later on, like when you make a lasagna. 
I like to cover it so we keep all the steam inside which help to cook the meat and it will help to keep the meat nice and moist. So after about five minutes, you have a look. Have a look, the meat is, see, half brown, two more minutes, covered, and we will be fine. So after about half an hour, our sauce is beautiful and ready. And what we need to do to finish it off, we need to add a little bit of uh, beautiful organic basil from the garden. Break it with your hands. You put it inside, just like that. Because if you cut the basil on the chopping board, you are going to ruin all, you're going to leave all the flavors on the chopping board. So the only way for you to get the flavors out of it is to use your hands. So now we mix it very well. So we get a nice basil sugo. Beautiful. We're ready to go. Our meat is also ready, see? What I like to do now, I like to get a little bit of sauce and put it in the meat. Not too much, just, uh, just maybe two, two spoons. And this will be added to the pasta al forno when we are assembling, okay? We are going to cover them so they stay nice and warm. What we want to do next is we want to bring to boil a large pot with a, a nice amount of water because we need to boil the pasta in there and also we want to bring to boil a small pan where we can cook our boiled eggs. So this is how I like to make my boiled eggs. I want the water to be boiled already. I don't want to wait. I don't want to put the eggs in the water because I want to cook them now for 14 minutes and I want to make them hard. You can make them or you can cook them for 12 minutes if you don't want to make them too hard but the reason why we need them hard is because we're gonna cook them in the pasta and uh, you don't want them to be too soft. Okay, it's been 12 minutes now. Here I have water with ice because we need the eggs to get cold straight away. We only need to make them cold. So what we do now, we get the egg, and we put them straight in the ice and we leave it there for a couple of minutes until they become nice and cold. Now, the classic pasta for the pasta al forno are rigatoni. They're good and they will become crunchy to perfection. The top part of the pasta al forno needs to be crunchy. Ziti are great too. And in America, you love ziti and they're very popular. Here in Australia, we don't really find ziti very easily. They're not common. You can use conchiglioni as well, but they just, I don't know, they're good, but they don't become as crunchy on top, as good as the rigatoni or ziti. So go for rigatoni. Interesting, because in Sicily, in some parts of Sicily, they use anellini, which is like a round pasta. And that doesn't really become crunchy, but it's still delicious. Time to cook pasta. Guys, when you cook pasta, always use a large pot and put a nice amount of rock salt okay so we are cooking half kilo of pasta and the pasta i chose are rigatoni just because they're beautiful they become crunchy on top and for me it's the perfect pasta okay this is an important topic how long do we cook the pasta for the rigatoni pasta forno or ziti my advice is don't listen to most of the people who tell you you cook the pasta halfway it's a big no, simply because not many people are used to al dente pasta. In Italy, me, I love al dente pasta, but many people don't like it. And if you only cook the pasta halfway, it's gonna be extremely al dente. So pasta al forno needs to have the crunchy top part, crunchy top part, and inside needs to be moist and nicely cooked. You know, you don't want them to be too al dente, otherwise we have the crusty part, too hard, the middle part too hard, it's not enjoyable. My recommendation is to follow the three minutes rule. So what I do is I cook the pasta and take it out three minutes before the instruction on the packet. So the pasta I'm cooking today takes 14 minutes to be cooked. So I'm taking them out at 11 minutes, so three minutes before. So if your pasta cooks for 10 minutes, take them out at seven minutes. The reason why I do this is because 
we are not using a very wet sauce you know like we're not using a lot of sauce the pasta is not swimming in a pool of sauce remember the three minutes rule okay take the pasta out three minutes before and then you're gonna you're going to mix it with the sauce of course always mix it with the sauce and then we assemble the dish for this baked city pasta forno we are using four different type of cheeses the first one is the pecorino then we have mozzarella cheese fior di latte and buffalo mozzarella these two cheeses they need to go in in the middle part and then we're going to use provolone which is nice dry cheese let's prepare our ingredients the eggs are nice and cold right now so they should be very easy to break keep it wet and the skin should come off very very easily so here we have a beautiful rigatoni cooked for 11 minutes so three minutes less than the packet the instruction on the packet and we're gonna put it in the sauce we mix it with the sauce here guys i just want to show you how al dente this pasta is so here i break it and see that inside it's like still white it's really al dente now gently mix your pasta but don't be too rough you don't want to break it so just mix gently so you have the sauce going everywhere and you must do this in a pot please don't do it in a salad bowl so you got the pasta ready right now i want to show you how perfect these eggs are cooked to perfection so i'm going to cut them in half and as you can see see they're nice perfectly boiled hard boiled and that's what you get okay and i'm not gonna cut anymore because the, re the way we're gonna cut these eggs is like this we cut it like that because we want to make it look pretty when you when you serve the pasta cut it like this and then what you can do you can cut this enough okay Another great ingredient we're going to use is the Calabrese Cacciatore Salame. The reason why I do this is because in Calabria, Calabria, they make the best salamis on the planet, okay? Please don't use chorizo, you know? If you're my friend and you wanna cook Italian food, you don't use chorizo, okay? Here is a beautiful Calabrese spicy salame, okay? We cut it like this, and then we need to uh, cut this into small small cubes okay with the cheeses i still like to cut it um, nice and thin like if you're making a pizza so you you want to create uh, cubes cubes of um, of mozzarella this is the fior di latte nice and creamy the buffalo mozzarella is very creamy as you can see and the other cheese we need to use for the top part is the provolone you want to cut your provolone into small cubes. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the most important part of the recipe, the assembling time. What we need to do is, we start by adding some sauce at the bottom. Then what we do, add the pasta in there. Yeah, we put the pasta, we have one layer right now. And now we fill it up with our favorite ingredients. So here we have, the meat first now if you want to use different ingredients go for it but don't use chorizo just use italian salami so here i've got the meat everywhere a little bit more because we love meat and now is the time for us to be gentle so first we want to add the mozzarella fior di latte then we want to add the pecorino cheese and you want to be very generous with the pecorino cheese. You don't like pecorino? Feel free to use parmigiano. Now I'm adding the salami, okay? So I've got salami. And then we're gonna add the eggs, but you wanna spread the eggs in a way that you see them when you eat them. So spread them around. And then again, we start again with a new layer. So we put more pasta on top. You can do more than one layer. You can do two, three layers, and now, I'm starting again with the provolone. Remember I told you, put the provolone on the top level. Then I go with the meat. Just be, be gentle, be nice, be generous. 
and then a nice amount of salami on top here i put a pecorino cheese on top and here you need to be very generous guys when you do this and then we put the eggs on top again i've got some more salami here so let's put more salami look i've got some buffalo mozzarella left you don't have to put it on top but i've got some left so here i'm gonna put some more on top and now we're ready to bake it at 180 celsius degrees for 30 minutes or until you see this pasta to become nice and crunchy you want the pasta on the edges here to become crunchy here do that press it all right we're ready to put it in the oven okay guys here i want to show you what's happening it's been cooking for about 20 25 minutes as you can see the edges are not crunchy, I mean they're crunchy but then you want them to be kind of burned like they need to be they need to look a little bit black see this one is all on the way not not far I will say in 10 more minutes so in total 35 minutes and uh, it's gonna be ready so it really depends on your oven sometimes your oven can be stronger so just keep an eye and then you will tell when it's ready this is the pasta forno you have been waiting for. And finally, the most important and best part of the video recipe. So this, I'm going to eat this by myself. Oh, I think Susan is going to have some if I don't finish it, everything. <laughs> As you can see, it's cooked to perfection. I've got these beautiful crunchy parts on top. I've got the moist pasta inside, still al dente, but moist, if you know what I mean. So let's see how it is. Mm. that's the crunch that you're looking for 100 percent look at this piece here look at this beautiful piece over here look at this ready for the bite look i've got egg i've got cheese i've got salami and i have meat and a crunchy bit so thank you so much for watching this episode we will see you on the next vincenzo's plate video recipe E ora si mangia, Vincenzo's plate. Mm. Yes.